Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about free dog training basics. The video is called Free Dog Training Basics, How to Build a, Bo a Bond with Your Dog. Now, I'm going to tell you what to expect. In this video, uh, we're going to be going over several dog training basics that are focused on how a dog learns. Uh, we're also going to be talking about step-by-step -step things that you can do, different ways that you can build a bond with your dog and how that is, how that relates to dog training and how important that is to dog training. And um, I'm also going to be referring you to a free uh, dog train, basic dog training uh, mini course. I'm going to give you the link to that. And I'm also going to give you um, at the end of the video a free gift that's also going to help you with dog training. So please stay tuned to the end for that. Uh, I just want to tell you we are on my website, People Loving Animals. Dot com. Um, this website I started in 2015. It's all about the care, training, and health of dogs and cats. I really would love it if you would visit the website. I'm going to give you a link in the description box. I'll talk a little bit about this uh, during the video. Um, but right now we're on this article. And what I do is I write articles and blog posts. I research all kinds of topics for my website. And you'll find all these articles on my website, peoplelovinganimals.com. And I'm not going to read you this article in today's video. I'm simply using this article as a template to go over the information um, for this video. So let's go ahead and start. Um, one of the things that is so important before you start dog training is to first build a loving bond with your dog. Your dog needs to trust you. Um, he needs to have a pleasant experience with you. I think that's one of the um, one of the best things to remember, I think, when you're trying to train a dog. Actually, there's two things that I think are crucial. One is that it's they need to trust you and they need to have a positive experience. Like I'll give you just a quick specific example. I don't want to go off on a rant. I want to stick to the the um, the article. Uh, but for example, if you're trying to teach a dog to come to you, especially a puppy, and you're like, come here, come here. And then you're like, come here, come here. And then when the dog comes to you, you scold them for not coming sooner. Okay, first of all, you cannot, you're not understanding how a dog thinks. A dog doesn't put that together. Geez, if I would have come five minutes ago, she wouldn't be mad. You see, the dog doesn't think that way. Second, you're creating a negative experience when the dog does come to you. Now, yeah, you're angry that they didn't come the first 15 times you called them, but when they do come on the 16th time you call them, you've got to give them a positive experience, you see? So that's just, just one simple example of what I'm talking about when I say one of the biggest um, factors in dog training is for your dog to have a positive experience as a result of obeying you, okay? The other thing that I think is so important to dog training is for us as owners to really get it and really understand that the dog really does want to please us. They really do. Now, I know that there's always exception to the rules, but in my in my experience, I have found dogs just, we are the most important thing to them. We are their world. We are their everything. We mean everything to them. Your dog's favorite thing in this world is you, okay? They want to spend time with us. They want to sleep with us. They want to play with us. They want to run with us. They want to sit on the couch with us. They want to eat with us. They want to do everything. They love us so much, and we mean so much to them. So they, in my opinion, they truly, really actually want to please you. Whatever you're trying to teach them, whatever you're asking of them, believe me when I tell you, the dog desperately wants to do it. He wants to figure out what you're asking of him and he wants to please you. Um, so you just have to keep that in mind. Try not to get frustrated. Just realize, try to say to yourself, if this dog could understand what I'm asking of him, he would do it in a second because it's always his desire to please me. So if this dog is not doing what I'm asking of him, there's a very good chance he's not understanding what I'm asking of him. OK, uh, now let me just give you another just sweet story before we go on. I had a, a Boston Terrier named Cagney. And if you've been on my YouTube channel or my website for any length of time, you've seen pe uh, pictures of Cagney. He's a beautiful Boston Terrier. And by the way, if you go on my 
YouTube channel under the uh, video playlist called Cute Animal Videos. You'll see a lot of really cute videos of Cagney, and I also have some videos of my little wiener dog, Taz. She's up here in the corner. You're going to see her later in this video, too. I have some cute videos of her, too. But back to Cagney. Cagney was, without a doubt, the most compliant dog I have ever owned. Um, now, I've owned dogs for more than 35 years. I've owned a ton of dogs, and Cagney was truly the most compliant. So when I talk about a dog wanting to please you, Cagney, my Boston Terrier, was the epitome of that. I'll give you a silly example that is just so cute, but it really sums up what I'm talking about. The dog, um, well, it's, to make a long story short, the, Cagney passed away from congestive heart failure. And if you've ever had a dog with congestive heart failure, you know that their care is very intense. There's lots of medications. There's all these things. You have to watch out for their fluid intake. You have to do all these things. So I was constantly asking things of Cagney. Please take this pill. You know, twice a day he had to take all these pills. And I had to figure out different genius ways to get him to take the pill. Because if you've ever had to give any animal a pill, you know they get wise to it real quick. So I was trying to always, trying to, I'm always asking something of Cagney. Cagney, please do this. Please do this. I had to, um, he had to be uh, carried up and down the stairs. He didn't like it, but he couldn't do it by himself. Do you see what I mean? Constantly asking things of him. And he also had some very pretty serious um, digestive issues and he would often have diarrhea. Now, a hundred years ago, I had a little wiener dog, not Taz. It was a different wiener dog named Maggie. And Maggie developed diarrhea and I took her to the vet. And I remember a hundred years ago, that veterinarian told me, oh, she's got diarrhea. Give her a little Pepto-Bismol. And I thought, Pepto-Bismol? First of all, I didn't know dogs could take it. And he said, yes, yeah, she can take a teaspoon of Pepto-Bismol. And I said, well, how do you go about giving a dog Pepto-Bismol? <laughs> Put it on a teaspoon. He said, no, just take the Pepto-Bismol with your finger, wipe it on her lips. She'll lick it and she'll take the Pepto-Bismol. So whenever I've had a dog over the years that is having a problem with diarrhea, I give him a teaspoon of Pepto-Bismol. Well, poor Cagney had had many teaspoons of Pepto-Bismol. And by the way, dogs generally don't like the taste of Pepto-Bismol. Okay, Pepto-Bismol is not meat flavored. It's not beef or chicken flavored. It's Pepto-Bismol. Some dogs will eat anything. Most dogs just don't like the taste of it, including Cagney. So he, I was often, you know, the dog was having to take pepto -Biz. When he got sick of it and he didn't want it and he got wise to it, I remember one day, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I'm on the kitchen floor with Cagney. I'm often on my knees with the dog and he's on the kitchen floor. And I've given him a little um, Pepto-Bismol on a, on a um, little saucer because he would generally take things off a saucer if I would put him on there. And I, w I was holding it out and I said, you know, pepto -Bismol. He he doesn't want he refused. He's not looking. And I said to him, please, sweetheart. And he ate it. So it's just a, it's such a sweet memory I have of that boy. He was such a good boy and he was so compliant, but it's the best example I can give you of the dog really wants to please you. So be kind, be kind when you're asking things of them. Um, do you see what I mean? So I'm really sorry I got off on that whole tan tangent, but let's just keep going here. First of all, I told you um, in the beginning of the video that I was going to give you a link to a free uh, mini course. And here it is here in this article. By the way, in the description box of this video, I'm going to give you the link to this article. So don't try to keep up and try to read this article the whole way through because I'm going to give you the link to it. You can go here. You can read it. You can click on the, all the links that, in it. So I am going to give you the link to this article. So you're going to be able to click in here if you want to. I'm also going to give you a link in the description box directly to the free mini course. Okay, so you, you can have that. Um, at any time. Uh, building a loving bond with your dog. One of the most crucial steps in training your dog successfully is building a loving bond with your dog. Like I said, they need to trust you. They need to know that you care about them. They need to feel secure with their owner. Uh, they need to feel like they belong to the family or in their little doggy brain, the pack. They need to feel like they belong. Um, they'll respond better to your uh, training attempts if you have built a loving bond with them. Um, and here's four ways to build a loving bond with your dog. Now, by the way, here's Cagney. This is me on the floor. Uh, this is Cagney, the Boston Terrier I just told you about. And this is another picture of the little wiener dog, Taz. 
Uh, one way you can build a loving relationship with your dog is obviously to spend time together. You know, don't get a dog and then go to work every day and then have obligations every night of the week and then be out of the house every weekend. And number one, you shouldn't have a dog if that's the case, because dogs are living, breathing things with feelings. They have to be in your company. They have to get out of the house. They have to do things. They have to go places. They have to have a life just like everybody else. So spend quality time with the dog. And I, if you do have a very busy schedule, try to, you know, take the dog for a short walk in the morning. Don't just let him out the back door to pee. Oh, go pee and get back in. Don't just let him out the back door to pee. Go outside with him for a couple minutes. Even if it's only five minutes, it's, you're creating a bond with your dog. You're doing activities together. Um, you know, maybe a few minutes after dinner every night, maybe you throw a tennis ball around in the living room for a little bit. Maybe you pick up a toy and do a little tug of war with them for a few minutes. Or maybe after dinner every night, you take your dog for a 20 or 30 minute walk, which by the way, that's really good for you too. I, I always say dogs are the best exercise program um, because you could just go out for walks with them. And you know, a few minutes before bed, a little snuggle time, a little snacky with them. Do you know what I mean? Like spend quality time with your dog. It really, it means so much to them. I don't even think we have any any clue how much we mean to our dogs. Number two, take him out, experience life together. Now, I've always been a person who has taken my dog's places, like my friends and family. If I show up, I'm there with my dog usually. Um, if your dog rides decent in the car, you can just, you know, take him with you. But you know, I mean, I don't need to tell you, don't leave your car, don't leave your dog unattended in the car. It's not, it's not safe. Um, but, you know, take him places if you can. Take him down to the park. If you have time, instead of just taking your dog for a walk around the block, put him in the car. Take him down to the park. Spend a half an hour. Be good for you and good for the dog. And, uh, you know, just like I say, take them to parks, any place you can think of where your dog can go. Um, I live near Niagara Falls, New York, and uh, near the Niagara River. And right down in the Niagara River is a place called Fort Niagara. You can Google it if you want to. Uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful park with beautiful walking paths. And I've lived in this area um, at this point for a little more than 20 years. And this little wiener dog, Taz, and I, she, we, she and I spent so many afternoons at Fort Niagara. It was one of my favorite things to do on a Sunday afternoon was to just go get Taz and go down to Fort Niagara. And we would spend about two hours and we would just walk around. And of course, it's beautiful because the river was down there and it was wonderful for her and it was wonderful for me. And, you know, these are just lasting memories that I'll always have of the dog. And it's and like I say, it's it's building um, building a loving bond with your dog. Number three, establish mutual respect. Um, you know, dogs have feelings just like everybody else. Don't treat them badly. Treat them kindly. Respect the dog's wishes. Respect what the dog needs. You know, um, you know, like, for example, if you take your dog out for a walk and he sniffs every single mailbox, I know it's frustrating. You want to walk. The dog wants to sniff. Well, it's his walk, too. You know what I mean? So when we're talking about establishing mutual respect, try to be giving a little, try to compromise a little and, and also make sure that your dog is getting things that he wants. Um, number four, learn to understand each other's needs with communication. You know, dogs um, and cats, by the way, are, are quite good at communicating. You know, when they're not happy, we know it, especially a cat. Um, and, you know, just pay attention, pay attention. If the dog is whining, he's whining for a reason. If the dog is constantly at you, constantly nagging you, uh, you know, whatever, if they're constantly going out to the kitchen, they're probably physically hungry, you know, like all these sorts of things, just pay attention and learn to communicate with your dog and really try to pay attention and try to figure out what are the patterns and the, the techniques that my dog uses to communicate with me. And then your dog, believe me, is always doing that process. They're always trying to figure you out. They're always trying to figure out what you're asking of them. And also dogs like small children thrive on routine. They thrive on knowing what to expect next. Like for example, small children, the bedtime routine, you go upstairs, you put your pajamas on, you wash your face and hands, you brush your teeth, then mommy comes up, you tuck in the bed, you read the story. It's a routine. That's very comforting to children. It's also very comforting to dogs. So this is another way that you can just have a loving um, relationship and a loving bond and a mutual respect with your dog is to have these routines where it, your dog is, is a part of your everyday life. And the two of you have your little, you know, your little routines, your little activities, things that you do together and try to make it routine and repetitive because they will thrive on that and they'll, they'll be comforted by that and it will make them happy. 
okay? Um, having a loving relationship with your dog uh, will not only make training way easier, but it'll also help your dog to be calm, quiet, and extremely well behaved. Uh, you know, they say a tired dog is a good dog. Well, you know what? A happy dog is also a good dog. So, you know, it's not just about teaching them to come when you call or teaching them, you know, to stop barking or whatever. It's about you know, teaching your dog how to behave and how do you behave when you're not happy? <laughs> you know, it's important. Uh, let's just keep going here. Uh, your dog will love you back, obviously. You know, dog's love is unconditional. Don't even get me started. I mean, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing. Again, here's a link for the free dog training course. And by the way, I'm going to take you there. Let me take you there. When you click on that link, this is where you're going to go. Uh, this is a dog training website called trainpetdog.com. They've got an enormous amount of information. So when you click that link, whether you click it from my article or whether you click it in the description box of this video, this is where you're going to get. Right over here in this box, this is where you subscribe to get the free mini course. It says get access to the free online seminars and subscribe to the dog training mini course and learn new and advanced training tips, methods, and strategies for free. Right over here, you put in your email, you put in your dog's name, hit subscribe, and you're going to get the free mini course they also have an enormous amount of other things uh, they have this dog training course which is a little bit more advanced than the free mini mini course um, it's it's more about bigger problem behaviors such as if your dog's being too noisy too aggressive biting these sorts of things um, it's a little bit more advanced dog training I can tell you right now the price is $37 if you click in here you can purchase that and uh, like I said it's a little bit more advanced um, they have an enormous amount of information on this website as you can see over here they have specific articles house training a puppy dog grooming best homemade dog recipes stop dog barking they have tons of articles tons of information uh, there's a video on here they talk about dog training schools they talk about um, all kinds of things so if you click click the link in my article or if you click it in the description box of this video this is where you're going to go and right here on the left this is where you put in your email and your dog's name and they'll send you the free mini course that um, that I'm referring to in this article okay and again, I'm also going to give you a free gift at the end that's going to give you even more uh, help about dog training. And I, I really want to tell you about that. So please stay tuned to the end for that. Now, here's another thing that's important when you're talking about, um, you know, uh, basic dog training. Uh, figuring out how dogs learn they aren't the same as us you know they aren't the same as us they they learn in in different ways than us and they also learn in similar ways because some of these things are similar to how we learn as human beings how children learn uh, phase one is teaching this is where you physically demonstrate to your dog what you're asking him to do you know the best way to do it is is to show him what you're asking him to do like for example if you're trying to teach a dog to sit you push his fanny down gently you push his fanny down you know you're showing him uh, uh, you know, shake, you know, like you're physically show the dog is phase one is the teaching where you're trying to show the dog what you want him to do. For example, if you're trying to teach a dog to come, you put him on the leash and you say, come and you pull him towards you on the leash. Come, you pull him towards you on the leash. Come, you pull him towards you on the leash. You're showing him what you're asking him to do. And then remember, like I talked about earlier, once he comes to you, you give him a little treat, give him a little pat on the head, a little smooch a little sweet talk. Always make when they do succeed, when they do ask, when they do what you're asking them, always make it a positive experience for them. Phase two is practicing. Uh, you know, once your dog learns a command or a lesson, practice it with him so he'll remember it. You can't just teach him once and then three days later he's going to remember. You do have to practice with him. Again, just like us. Uh, phase three is generalizing. Now, this is a very important step in dog training. And that if you're, you know, if you're in your living room and um, I don't know, I'm trying to come up with a good, really good example here. But if you're, uh, say, in your backyard and you let your dog out to go to the bathroom and then you want him to come in and you got to get ready for work, whatever, you're like, hey, you know, um, Buster, whatever your dog name is, hey, Buster, come on in. It's a routine. They're in the backyard. You open the door. You're calling them. They're in the backyard. You open the door. You're calling them. You're in the backyard. It's it's a it's. A specific environment it's a specific environment well you also want them to come to you when you're at the park you also want them to come to you when you're visiting at a, at a friend's house Do you see what I mean so you've got to take the commands that your dog has learned and you have to have them do them in other places with other environments um, also you know with like different distractions and stuff so if your dog is doing well at coming to you um, 
you know, try it at the park. Um, even simple commands like sit or lay down or or whatever. Just remember, you have to generalize it more. It can't just be, oh, your dog is, you know, so well behaved at home, but he's not well behaved anyplace else. Well, he really needs to be well behaved in every in every circumstance. So that's what generalization means. Um, phase four is testing. If you're sure um, your dog has learned the commands, if he responds correctly almost every time, then start testing him in new locations with even more distractions. For example, take him to visit a friend and while he's in that new place and excited, test a command out and see if he still responds correctly. Okay, so it's like, is the dog just doing this every time because we've made this a habit or does he in fact understand the command? See what I mean? That's how you can kind of test them. Uh, now, when you're doing this, one of two things will happen. Either he succeeds or he fails. If he fails, don't lose hope and don't get discouraged. Don't be mean to the dog. Um, don't express upset or anger uh, with the dog. Just examine the situation, examine your location, the environment, review the te training techniques, practice them with, him, with him more, and then try again. You know, some dogs learn very quickly, some dogs don't. Some dogs will learn some things very quickly, other things they won't. But again, just keep in mind, they do have to practice, they're learning something new, and and, uh, and like I said, keep in mind, they do really want to please you. And so if they're not doing it, think of it as the problem is you. The problem is not the dog. The problem is how you're communicating it. So you need to come up with, don't do the same thing over and over and over again and expect to get different results. If you're doing the same technique over and over and the dog really isn't getting it, you need to find a different technique. Try to adjust a little bit. You know, just try to do things a little bit different way. It's just like if you're speaking to somebody and they're like, huh, they don't understand what you're saying. You immediately find a different way to say it. You immediately look for different words in that, until they get it. Do you see what I mean? Just like human beings, they don't always get it the first time. You know, sometimes you might have to try a couple of different ways. And like I say, don't get discouraged. Um, and and the, the fifth phase is internalizing. Finally, the last phase of your dog's training process is where he truly gets everything you've taught him. He responds every single time with or without treats and in any locations. And I say in my article, congratulations. That's successful dog training. Now, um, I, I do... Uh, recommend that you do the free mini course. I do recommend that you purchase the $37 training program. It is quite thorough. It is quite effective, especially if you're having a, um, especially if you're having an issue with your dog, if you're having dog aggression or dog biting or dog separation anxiety or potty training or any of these things. Um, you know, it's, it's worth your while to invest a little money. $37 is not a lot of money and, um, it's money well invested because if you have a well-behaved, well-trained dog, his life will be happier. And so, will yours okay um now here's my little wiener dog taz isn't she cute this is the little dog that i told you when we went down to fort niagara time look at how sweet she is now i say remember never scold your dog if he fails and this is why i put this sweet picture of taz in here because i remember the day that this picture was taken at the time i was working at a university and um i was off sick for the day and not only was i physically sick i i didn't feel good I, I i just was i don't know if it was like a flu kind of thing but it was also affecting me emotionally i just felt depressed that day i felt very fatigued i felt very sick i had called in sick to work i just it just was one of those days where i just wasn't feeling good and don't i go into the bedroom and here's this little sweetie and this is i had to get the phone and take the picture look at her and it just like turned my whole day around. It's like, look at how sweet she is. Like, how can you be depressed? How can you be sad when this cute little sweetheart is sitting right there? Do you know what I mean? Like they affect us so much, don't they? They help us in our lives so much. Um, so that's why I put this sweet little picture and it's like, don't scold your dog if he's not understanding the training. They really, really do want to please you. They they really do. And they're just, they're so beautiful. And remember all the times they're there for us, you know, when we're upset. And who else gets as excited when you come home? <laughs> your husband? Your kids? No, the dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just don't ever forget the value of your dog. And don't ever forget that we don't have them very long. You know, the... Maximum life expectancy for dogs is anywhere from 10 to at the most 20 years. 
and uh, we don't get them for very long. So don't scold your dog. Don't be unkind to your dog. Remember that you're not going to have him forever, and remember you're going to miss him when he's gone. Uh, you must be persistent, consistent, and patient in order to get to, uh, good results. Appraise, uh, I'm sorry, praise, appreciate, and love your dog when he does it right. Praise and affection go a long, long way in dog training. A little encouragement will work wonders. Uh, so again, here's the link to the free uh, mini course about dog training. Uh, dog training is easy when you do it right. Um, you can go to their website, like I said, you can find out more. Um, also, I want to tell you a couple of things. Well, first of all, let me tell you, um, in the well, let me, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself because there's so much I want to tell you, but I don't want to keep you that long, so I'm trying to talk fast, which is just making me keep you longer. First, I donate to animal charities. Um, I run this website, um, peoplelovinganimals.com. Uh, I am an affiliate marketer. I am full time. This is how I earn a living. I write articles uh, for my website all about every issue that people have with dogs and cats, everything from dog training to cat training to um, feeding your dog, um, health issues, you know, dog, why is the dog barking? Why won't the cat go in the litter box? Like everything you can think of. There are hundreds of articles on my website and my YouTube channel is fairly new. I'm now doing videos um, to cover all these all these topics that I cover on my website. And I am an affiliate marketer. And what I do is I look for products and services that I can recommend to the people who are visiting my website that will help them with their dog. Like for example, this dog training program, if you purchase that dog training program for the $37, I get a small commission on that. If for example, for example, I have a one of the um, articles on my website is about crate training for dogs and cats. And well, in the crate training article, I'm giving you links um, that go to different varieties of crates that we talk about in that training. And the links go to purchasing that crate on Amazon. Well, I'm an affiliate for Amazon, so I get a commission if you purchase that crate. Do you understand? So that's how I'm able to do this as my job. That's how I'm able to do this for a living because when people are reading my articles or watching my videos and they're clicking on my links and if they're making purchases of the products and services that I'm recommending, then I get a commission and that's how I earn money and that's how I'm able to do this online. Um, I donate 10% of those commissions to animal charities. So anytime you're on any article on my website, anytime you're on anything, an email from me on, on one of my social media pages, if you're on my YouTube channel, anytime you go click into a link from me and you make a purchase, I will donate 10% of the commissions I earn from that purchase to animal charities. And on the homepage of my website, um, if you go to just peoplelovinganimals.com, you'll see a list of the animal charities uh, charities that I donate to. So I just always like to fill people in about that. Um, I also want to, and uh, in the article you'll see here for more articles about dog training, click here. I, I have dozens of um, articles on my website about dog training. I do recommend um, actually three dog trainers altogether. Uh, I recommend this dog training program and I also recommend Doggy Dan. He has um, a dog training website called, um, called the Online Dog Trainer. And the free gift that I'm giving you with this video, if you go into the description box, you're going to see a big um, all capital letter, letter sentence that says, click here to grab your free gift. You click there, you give me your email, and I'm going to email you a dog, a free dog training manual. And it's really good, and it's quite thorough. And it's written by Doggy Dan, who is the owner of the online dog trainer. And um, it's it's just a very good resource. Now, that's one of the dog training sites that I also recommend. Now, that one is more video-based. Um, on that website, uh, Doggy Dan has more than 300 videos of him actually teaching dogs, like going into people's homes and working with the dogs and teaching them. It's kind of like the dog whisperer. It's kind of like what Cesar Milan does. I personally um, recommend Doggy Dan. I, I really like it. But anyway, um, that's your free gift. So go ahead and subscribe. Now, when you give me your email to get the free dog training manual, you're signing up for my dog lovers email list. I have a dog lover's email list and I also have a cat lover's email list. When you're subscribed to that list, every five or seven days or so, you get a new email from me and it'll either contain an article such as this that I've written for my website all about dogs, 
um, or all about pet care, uh, pet issues in general, or you'll receive an email with a new uh, video that I've done. So I think that you'll, you can unsubscribe from that email list at any time, but I think you'll find it pretty valuable. It really does cover a lot of topics. And I really research um, all the articles that I do. I research all the um, the services and the products that I rent, recommend to people. And um, when I'm researching um, for my articles, specifically um, if it's about health issues, I go through credible sources, okay? I don't just read Joe Blow's blog and then pass that information on to you. I go to credible sources and uh, I spend a lot of time on the research end of things. So um, I hope that that makes me a, a credible and valuable um, resource, uh, you know, for information for you. Um, now, let me just look at my list because I want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Also, if you uh, liked this video, if it helped you at all, please give it a like. Um, please always do that, not only for me, but for every YouTuber. YouTube is hard. It's extremely competitive. Um, we have a, it's, it's very hard to get your, your videos seen on YouTube. And whenever anybody gives it a like, it tells YouTube that you liked our video. And the more likes we get, the more, um, the more, YouTube will show our videos to people. So it's really important to, to give a like. If, if someone has done a video that has helped you in any way, uh, please give a like. Also, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. I do a video at least once a week, sometimes more often. And um, again, I think you'll find them helpful. And you know, when you, when you, um, if you want to click the notification bell, you'll get um, a notification every time I do a new video. If you're on my, um, dog lovers email subscriber list you'll get an email from me every time I do a new video and then you just watch the ones you're interested in and you don't watch the ones you're not because obviously you're not going to be interested in every single topic that I cover but um, I think you'll find it valuable I really would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and I also would appreciate it if you would share this please share my website peoplelovinganimals.com share this YouTube channel um, if you're getting emails from me please share it uh, maybe um, throw a link on your Facebook page or your Instagram or something because um, you might have friends who have a dog or a cat and they're really having an issue with that animal and they really need help and they could very well get help on, on my website and uh, so it's going to help a lot of people it helps a lot of animals and because I donate 10% of any of the purchases um, any of the commissions that I earn to animal charities it does also help animals so for that reason I'm going to ask you to please share my website please share this this uh, video um, with your friends and family who are animal lovers. I really would appreciate it so much. Again, in the description box, I'm going to give you the link to this article. I'm also going to give you a direct link to get the free uh, mini course. I'm also giving you the link where it says grab your free gift. That's where you can sign up and get the free dog training manual from Doggy Dan. And that's what subscribes you to my dog lovers email list. And, um, I think that's it. So again, thank you so much for tuning in and watch my video. I really hope that this has helped you. I would love it if you would comment down below and let me know what kind of dog you have. What's their name? Um, let me know how they're, how they're doing with training. Let me know if you need any specific help. If you have any specific questions, I'm always, um, I'm always available. I always read your comments. I always reply to your emails and, uh, just let me know if I can do anything more to help. So again, my name is Deborah and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks so much for visiting. Bye-bye.